רוברט פינסקי, שלום. שלום. Welcome to Culture Buzz. A pleasure to be here. Welcome to Israel. To be on Culture Buzz and in Israel, truly a pleasure. Not to mention Jerusalem. Not in a day like this? Jerusalem and a perfect day. Robert, what brings you to Israel this time? I'm here for the Kisufim conference. Uh, that is my official reason. And the unofficial reason is uh, I remembered how strong the aura of specifically the old city was from my previous visit, which was years ago. And uh, I decided I want to feel that aura again. Aha, uh-huh, wonderful. Good. Lucky us. Robert, I wanted to ask you about your special status, if I may use this word, when it comes to poetry in the United States of America. You have been now, if I'm not wrong, a poet laureate for three times? Yes, three times. Will you be kind enough to describe uh, to us what does it mean? How significant is it? The significance to me is that it enabled me to do a project that I highly recommend to Culture Buzz, to anyone who hears this. Okay. There is a website, favoritepoem.org. Favoritepoem.org is the website of the Favorite Poem Project. As Poet Laureate, I invited Americans to tell me about a poem they loved, to write sentences. So you'll see there a video of a United States Marine with an Hispanic surname, and he recites William Yeats's poem, Politics, talks about it, relates it to his love for his wife. You'll see a construction worker reading a poem by Walt Whitman and discussing it. You'll see a high school student who is an immigrant from Cambodia, and she talks about Langston Hughes's poem, Minstrel Man. This is not poets or professors of poetry or critics, it's readers. Thousands of them responded to that invitation, and I'm very proud of those videos. Uh, I invite any kindergarten through high school teacher in Israel who'd like to come to Boston for a week in July. We give you the videos. We talk about teaching poetry not as a puzzle, but as an art. And I think anyone who wants to know about the United States of America or about poetry should look at those videos at favoritepoem.org. This is truly amazing, and how educational it is. Uh, basically, it's about uh, bringing poetry to the people. Or not exactly bringing poetry to the people. I didn't tell anybody about poetry. I asked. So it is finding poetry among the American people. Uh-huh. And it's not only American poetry they love. We had people write very eloquent letters about poems written in uh, the language of Burma, the language of China, the wow. language of Poland. And uh, you will see people read, a uh, uh, high school teacher in Connecticut who's an immigrant from Puerto Rico reads uh, uh, a poem in Spanish and English. And our commission from the uh, Clinton administration celebration of the year 2000 was a portrait of the United States of America in the year 2000 through the lens of poetry. And I think favoritepoem.org succeeds in giving that portrait. So you're finding out something about poetry, how people love it, and you're also seeing people, Americans, of lots of different ages, regional accents, every kind of profession, except poet, Uh, you see them reading poems, wow. great poems very often. We can't wait uh, visiting this uh, truly wonderful site. As you can tell, well I'm proud of it. Well done, for, a good, uh, for a good reason. Robert, uh, you have been on television a lot, uh, Mr. Colbert program and uh, The Simpsons. This is true. So, uh, a multi-talent, are we? Um, I... Probably, though I have earned my bread as a teacher most of my life, uh, I did once want to be a professional musician. Uh, I am what we call, pardon the expression in a kosher country, I'm what is called in English a ham. And uh, I enjoy being an amateur performer. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a saxophone, right? That was my main instrument, was the saxophone, yes. So, another thing you shared with Bill Clinton. 
Clinton. It is true that I share that with Bill Clinton. And in fact, there's now a CD called Poem Jazz. And Poem Jazz is the wonderful pianist, uh, Grammy Award winning pianist, Lawrence Hubgood. Lawrence plays, and uh, I say poems. Wonderful. And we try to make it musical. Hey, sounds uh, lovely. Well, but I wanted to ask you about what does poetry mean to you? Poetry for me is an art where the medium is on a human scale. Because the medium is not my voice as a poet. The medium of the poet is the breath of whoever says the poem. So in those videos, if someone says Emily Dickinson's poem, that person's body is Dickinson's instrument. I'll say a two-line poem to you, written in the 19th century. Please. On love, on grief, on every human thing, time sprinkles Leafy's water with his wing. Leafy's water is the water of forgetfulness. When I say on love, on grief, on every human thing, time sprinkles Leafy's water with his wing. My body, my lips, my tongue, my breath becomes the instrument of Walter Savage Landor, who wrote the poem. To me, this means that poetry is on a human scale, on an individual scale, so that respect for the individual in this very ancient, once aristocratic art or folk art, I love mass art. I like my TiVo, I like my computer, I love recorded music. I don't say that things on a mass scale are bad, but there's something wonderful about poetry being of the mind and the body and of being in the audience's body. I write with my voice. But I don't write for my voice. I write for your voice. I write for the voice of whoever says the poem. Mm-hmm. Everybody can enjoy poetry? Yes. Every child. Put the child on your lap and read verses to the child. The child enjoys it. Everybody can write poetry? Probably we all have a poem in us. Everybody makes up little things that are like poems. So oh, where's my keys? My keys, my keys, my keys, my keys. Or, oh, no, 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 no. Or, yes, 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 yes. This is... making language expressive beyond the meanings. It's using the rhythms and the melodies of language, because language does have melodies, eadity. And we all do that somewhat. And maybe in theory, everybody has at least one expressive little tune or rhythm they can put together, maybe more than one. Robert, how cosmo- cosmopolitan poetry is? Can it bridge between cultures, mentalities, and people? Translation... from Hebrew has had a profound effect on English-speaking countries. The Hebrew Bible in translation has had a formative effect on American culture, on English culture, on many others one could name. There's no question. People sometimes say to me, is poetry very effective? Or do people read poetry? And one thing I think is, have you heard of the Quran? The Quran is metrical. Uh, it's not secular poetry, but it's very powerful. One reason people can memorize the entire Quran and long stretches of it is that it is cadenced. It is in a, it's in a meter. Uh, so I don't think there's any doubt that poetry communicates across cultural divisions. Robert, uh, regarding your knowledge of Israeli colleagues, Israeli poetry? Very limited, I'm sorry to say, but go on. You just read a wonderful poem by Yehuda Michai, and oh, you told yes. me that you have met him. I have met Yehuda more than once, yes, and uh, admire his poems very much. I've often quoted them, and... Um, And my impression was that I didn't know Yehuda well. He's also a very agreeable man and fun to be with. Absolutely. Indeed he was. And one more question. I know that your uh, poetry has been translated to many languages. Yes. So people can enjoy it all over the world. But for some reason, not yet, I emphasize the word yet, not to Hebrew. Well, my... How come? 
my friends uh, Hava Pinchas Cole, Hava Pinchas Cohen, and Michael Kramer have done several poems in a little booklet we had here at the Kisufim conference, and I think they would like to do more. And uh, Moshe Dor has translated some of my poems, as has Tal Nitzan. So I don't feel, I'm not complaining, I don't feel badly treated because these wonderful poets have uh, decided to translate some of my poems. Excellent, good choice. Perfect choice. Robert, we would like to thank you very much for taking the time, for being uh, the first one on our new exciting series dedicated to the poetry of Yehuda Michai, and uh, to wish you all the best uh, with everything that you are doing, and take some of this Jerusalemite warmth to freezing Boston. I'll try to carry it to the snow with me. Toda <laughs> Robert. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.